Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing, a joy to see so many children ar around us. And let me tell you, parents, I know, because, you know, I was there in your shoes at that age, and I know it can be a little bit embarrassing when they're making noise, but you know what? I love the noise. It doesn't bother me. Psalms 8, 2 says, out of the mouth of the babies, you founded your strength. So give praise to the Lord when you hear the noise of babies and little children. That means that we are alive and we have a present and a future. So thank you, staff. I know that um, you know every member of the staff was recognized for their effort throughout the year. And believe me, those of us who work with children, it takes a lot of patience, creation, imagination, and everything that finishes in Asian. So thank you so much for your work. But I do have to recognize our directors. So Dan and Jennifer, thank you. I, I know this was a tough year, and maybe some of our family, uh, church family don't know, but um, they lost a loved one um, this year. We walked together through the valley, but we are with him. Jesus is always with us, and I thank you because even in the middle of the pain, we pulled through, and this is the result and this is why we do what we do so to God be the glory and keep up the good work because it is for him let us pray father we come to you in the name of Jesus to dedicate our little ones to you because you have given them to us and we humbly ask that you give us the wisdom the love and the unconditional and tireless energy to love them to care for them to be Jesus to them and to show your unconditional love to each one of them every day of their lives. We thank you, Lord. And we humbly ask you that you do whatever you have to do in our lives, in our homes, in our families, so that one day we may be worshiping you all together face to face. In the meantime, help us to learn more about you through your word, which is a lamp to our path. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. Would you please speak to us individually? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today's message has to do with names. I have called you by name. I'm going to ask a couple of questions, so it's okay. You don't have to say, just, just raise your hand. Did anybody at one point in your life did not like your name or your middle name? Raise your hand. Okay, uh -huh. you see, you are not alone. You know, I, I know people that, you know, they, they, they have names, but they don't, they don't use them. Like, I don't know about you, but, you know, Hispanic parents, I think they just give us a middle name when they have to, you know, punish us. You know, when I misbehaved, I knew because my mom would be, Freddy Eduardo Rodriguez Rojas Triviño Escobar, venga para acá. Yeah, they also use their, their two last names, you know, their given names and all of their family names. And I knew when they said Freddy Eduardo Rodriguez, I was in trouble. That's why I didn't give a middle name to my boys. Eduardo and Alejandro, that's it. Because I don't want, you know, we can associate names with painful experiences. Very painful experiences. I have called you by name. You are mine. And this is the message that Jesus has prepared for you and me today. So whether you are one year old and you are in the, what's the name of the new class? Discovery class. Or if you are in the late stages in your life where you think that you have been discovered, everything that you could discover, I want to tell you, no matter how young or younger you are, Jesus has called you by name. You belong to him. So I invite you to open your Bibles in the book of Isaiah 
chapter 43, book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and we are going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1, 2, and 3. And this is a summary that is in here. So we're going to read the three verses, and then we're going to read this, this summary. In other words, what Jesus means to us, little children. Because we are his little children. Do you know that God has no grandchildren? Isn't that amazing? God only has children. He loves you. He created you with his own hands. He has a purpose for you. He loves you. And he can't wait to hug you in heaven. So let's do whatever it takes to give God his wish. We always talk about our wishes. What do you wish for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? How about God? The God, the wish that God has always wanted in his all eternity life, billions and billions of years old, is to hug you and me in heaven. Isn't that amazing? So can we pray to God every day and say, Lord, I want to give you your wish. I want to grant you your wish. Help me do whatever I need to do. Because you have done everything that you needed to do to save us. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, Jacob, and he who formed you, Oh, Israel. Did you notice something funny about this verse? It mentions two names. What is the first name that is mentioned? Je Jacob, right? And what is the second name? Israel. Do you know he's talking about the same person? So how come? No, Jacob didn't have a first name and a middle name. No, his name wasn't Jacob, Israel. No. God did something amazing in the life of Jacob. You know what he did? He changed his name. Did you know that Jacob didn't like his name? Oh, Jacob didn't like his name. You know why? Because the meaning of the name Jacob is liar. How many of you would like to be in a school and all of a sudden the teacher calls you, Oh, where is the liar? How do you think that Jacob felt growing up? That was terrible, right? But not only Jacob means liar, it also means the deceiver. It also means the tricky one. Do you know people that are tricky when they are playing games at home? That they cheat? We're not going to mention point any fingers. That like to do business when playing Monopoly. Oh, I love playing Monopoly, but my wife doesn't like to do business with me. Pray for her. We love playing games, but sometimes we think it's funny to cheat. But you know what? Jesus is watching. So whether we eat, we drink, we play, or we do anything, we do it all for the honor and glory of God. So you should have fun in everything that you do. Jacob didn't like to be called Jacob. So if you ever complain about your name, Jacob had it worse. Imagine, hey, you liar, come over here. That was terrible. But all of a sudden, one night... His life would be changed forever. He was, it was dark. He was by himself. He was alone. And he was scared. Have you ever been scared in the dark? Raise your hands. You have. Imagine this. Jacob was alone. He was in the middle of the desert. He was by himself and all of a sudden, this guy shows out of nowhere. And guess what Jacob did? Jacob started fighting with him. You know the first WWF match in history? <laughs> Jacob. You know who was the masked guy? It was Jesus himself, the angel of the Lord that had come. Have you ever prayed a prayer and you said, Jesus, please help me? So Jacob was praying that night, Jesus, please help me. Lord, help me. My brother wants to kill me. Have you ever had a brother that wanted to not love you so much? You know, you know, brother, sister, sibling, sometimes, you know, they've, but his brother wanted to kill him. And guess what happened? Jesus himself said, you know, I love my boy Jacob. 
I'm going to go down and I'm going to help him and I'm going to tell him that I am here for him. And guess what happened? Jacob didn't even let Jesus talk. Jacob started beating on. Can you believe Jacob was beating on Jesus? Well, he, pre he, he thought he could. And you can preach, you know, Jesus was like, okay, yeah, Jacob. And Jacob is going at it like, oh, really hard, you know, like trying some jujitsu hooks like Mr. Richard. You're trying hard. Oh. And I just pictured Jesus, oh, Jacob, with one finger. Oh, yeah. oh, Jacob, when are you going to give up? And finally, it was, imagine all night long fighting with Jesus. Have you ever fought with Jesus? Have you ever complained and complained because he doesn't want you what you want? And you know why Jesus doesn't want to give you what you want sometimes? Because he knows that if he gives you what you want, he's going to hurt you. Because Jesus can see the end from the beginning. He knows what is the best for you and me. And that's why sometimes he has to say, no, I'm sorry. If I give you this, you're going to get hurt. I can't. That's why I think Jesus will never give me a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. Because <laughs> I have, you, I don't know why. I don't know if you have any family members at home. But for some reason, my right foot is super heavy when I'm driving. I don't know why. It just gets heavy in it. So Jesus won't give me a Lamborghini. Because my right foot is too heavy. Finally, it's done. Sun is coming up, and Jesus tells Jacob, Jacob, let me go. And then, finally, when Jacob listened to God's voice, he realized, what a fool. I've been fighting with Jesus all night long. And he was like, Lord, he closed his eyes. He grabbed onto Jesus' heel, and he was like, Lord, I will never leave you i will not let go unless you bless me and you know what on that moment jacob's life was changed forever because jesus himself changed his name his name was no longer jacob he told him you have fought with me you have fought with God and you have survived. Your name will no longer be Jacob the liar. For now on, your name is going to be called Israel, which means he who has fought with God and has won. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus will accept just anyone, even a liar. A cheater, a deceiver, even someone who has done a lot of bad things in their lives. But if you come to Jesus, Jesus will accept you as you are. He says, come as you are. But he won't leave you as you are. He will change you. He will transform you. He will touch you. And when Jacob experienced the touch of Jesus, he wasn't pretty. Jesus dislocated his hip. You know why? You're like, ooh, Jesus was aggressive that night. I'm going to tell you why. Because Jacob wanted to run from his older brother, Esau. And Jesus was telling him, Jacob, he can't run now. Tag, boom. And, and Jacob was like, oh, oh, I cannot run anymore. Jesus, what did you do? Jesus sometimes will do things that we don't understand and that we don't like. But there is always a lesson, even be, beyond pain. And the lesson was, Jacob... You're not going to depend on your own strength. From this day on, you are solely going to depend on me. And from that day, Jacob's life was changed forever. And that is why his name is Jacob. And this is what Jesus is telling the people of Israel. Imagine now, not only Jacob received the blessing of having a new name for him, but for his entire family. And now, everybody that believes in Jesus and accepts Jesus can be part of the people of Israel. Now you understand why in Isaiah 43... God is giving a message to his people because they had been conquered by the Babylonian Empire. They were no longer free to do what they wanted to do. Now they, got, they had to pay taxes to 
Babylon to keep Nebuchadnezzar and some of their family and friends were taken to Babylon. You know Daniel and his friends? So the people who stayed in Jerusalem and in Judah received this message from the Lord. They were all discouraged. They were sad. Their families were separated and divided like it has happened in, in Russia. I talked to a very good friend of mine, my best friend in high school, Eddie. And I was talking to Eddie because his wife is from Russia. So I was telling Eddie, you know, everybody's mad at Russia because you know what's happening. But tell me about your wife. And he said, Freddie... Pray for her family. And I'm like, why? Because half of their family have lived in Ukraine for many years. So there are many Russian families who have relatives and family members that are on the other side. And they can no longer see each other. And people want to attack them as enemies. But they are families that they don't understand what's going on. So pray for the people in Ukraine. But also pray for the people in Russia that have families and don't understand what's going on in the world. So I was talking with him and he was telling me, you know, and it made me realize that a lot of times we complain because we don't like the things that we have. Right. Like the next picture. You know what's happening to this girl that you were going to see in the picture? She doesn't want to eat her vegetables. Parents, do you know anybody that doesn't like to eat his vegetables? Don't raise your hand. I don't want this. Have you ever heard? No, I know that this doesn't happen here in church. Nobody has heard that in this church. But next time that you don't feel like eating your veggies or eating what mommy has prepared for you or papi has brought for you, remember this next girl in the picture. There was a theory back in 2011 that the world was going to end in 2012. Did you hear that? There was even a movie that said 2012, at the end of the world. And somebody in a very, very poor country said this in an interview when he was asked, are you afraid that the world may end in 2012? And this is what they said. I am not afraid for the world will end in 2012. I fear that the world will continue without changing anything. Kids, Jesus has called you and me to be a light to the world, to be a difference, to make a difference around you. And you know how you can make a difference around you? When your parents stop up at a light and lately you see a lot of homeless people in a popka, in a, instead of like turning your, your face away from them, just look at them and give them a smile. Even if you don't have any money, give them a smile and just sign to them, tell them, I'm going to be praying for you. And it can change their lives. You see, true happiness in the world is not about having money or giving money away. It's giving your time and energy to serve and help other people. But Jesus is calling you and me today to be a difference in the world. He says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are my precious child in honor in my sight because I love you. I know something about names and about being loved. I had the privilege and the blessing of being born in a pastoral family. My dad was also a pastor. He's still a pastor, but he is no longer active, but he will be forever a pastor. And guess what? This week, as I was going through my pictures, I was trying to find pictures when I was an adventurer. And guess what? I found a picture when I went to my first camping experience ever. Remember a few... Uh, Weeks ago, I told a story about a certain experience that happened on my behind the storylines story. So I found the picture. I was two years old. And guess what? In the 70s, that was a long time ago, there were no adventurers. 
I'm so old that when I was born, they didn't even have adventures. Can you believe that? So they dressed me up. My dad, that's my dad. That was my best friend at the time. And that's me. Look, and I had a Pathfinder uniform because they didn't have adventure, cool ad adventure uniforms like you guys have today. So I had my, my Pathfinder uniform. That was my first camping. I was two years old. And that's when I got burned because I sat down in, so, in three rocks where they had cooked the lunch for everybody. It was a very, very painful experience. I was two and I still remember. Imagine that. It was very painful. You don't want to know how painful, but it was painful. Have you ever burned your finger? Okay, picture that, but in a different part of your body. With your pants melting into, yes, it was that bad. So, yeah, that picture brings a lot of memories. <clears throat> Why do I show you that picture? Because believe it or not, all of us here, with no exception, all of us were two years old at one point in our lives. Some of us a few years ago. Some of us a few years more ago, but we were all children. Do you remember when you were two? Do you remember the love of your parents, your grandparents, those who are already resting in the Lord? Never forget how faithful God has been because the same God that knew you when you were two years old knows you today. The next Bible verse that I want to share with you today is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 2 and 3. Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 2 and 3. And this is what the Lord says. says this is what, literally, this is what the Lord says. He who made what? The earth. The Lord who formed it. And established it. The Lord is his name. First God is telling us, hey, I know your name. I named you. I know who you are. I know where you live. I know everything about you. But I want to tell you about my name. My name is the Lord. And the Lord means he who is. Not he who was. Not he who is to come. No. He who is the Lord. The great I am. And this is what God is telling you and me today. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. This was back in 2006. I was in a mission trip in the Dominican Republic. I was, it was my first year as a chaplain for school Bible teacher. And I didn't know any better. And somehow I thought that it was great to take 80 teenagers to Dominican Republic. Do not try that at home. <laughs> I ended up with five of them in the, in the ER. Not DR, in the ER in DR. <laughs> but that's another story for another sermon. But I'll tell you this, it was a Thursday night. I was finally at the dorm where we were staying with all 80 of them. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call from Ruby, my wife, and she is crying. And you know, husbands, when your wife calls you and she's crying, you know, it's going to be a long call. And I was like, baby, what's wrong? And she couldn't talk. She was just crying and sobbing. And she's like... Baby, I just came from the doctor. Ruby was pregnant at the time from Eduardo. And the doctor told her, by the way, if you are a doctor or if you are in the medical field, there are ways of giving bad news. So if, you, if God didn't give you the gift of giving bad news, call a chaplain, a pastor, and deliver the news with them so that they can pray with the family afterwards. This doctor called Ruby 
and just said, oh, well, you know, you have developed this condition. It's, it's called this and this and that. And because of that, your baby is being burned inside your belly. Yes, please. There are be better ways of sharing news, right? So Ruby was hysterical. She called me. She was crying. I am on another country. I couldn't fly back that night. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. And I got on my knees. And, you know, you know fathers and, and husbands, we want to do our best. We want to reassure our wives that it, everything is going to be okay. I prayed with her. When I hung up the phone, I started crying like a baby. And I said, Lord, why? I am here. I just came back from the ER with these five teenagers. They're okay now. And now you're telling me that my son is in danger. And I did something that I don't usually do. But it, sometimes it works. You don't have to do this all the time, okay? What I did, I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm so desperate. I don't even know where to go in the Bible. So I closed my eyes. I opened the Bible. And it opened in. Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah 33, 1, 2, 3. And this is what the Lord said, Freddy. This is who is talking to you. I am your God. And listen to me. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you don't even understand. And at that moment, I had the peace of knowing that God was in control. But you know what happens? We forget. Every time we have a new problem, we forget the way that God has helped us in the past. Right? Has that happened to you? Maybe I am talking to somebody right now that is going through a hard situation. And you forgot all the many times that God has helped you. Please, go back in time. Go back to the future. And know that God is in control. That the same God that delivered you in the most stressful situations growing up or doing things that at the time you thought it was the end of the world, He is still in control and He has promised you, here I am with you all the days, even till the end of the world. Amen. Fast forward four years after, 2010. Again, this time I was not in a mission trip, but I was going to a pastor's meeting. I was driving in South Florida, and I get another phone call from Ruby, and again, she was crying. Now, this time, Ruby was pregnant with Alejandro, and she said, the news that no parents want to hear when you are expecting a child. I just got a phone call from the doctors, and the doctors have told me that Alejandro is going to be born with a Down syndrome. And parents, my whole world fell apart again because I forgot about Jeremiah. So next time, and I will always tell you, don't tell God how big your problems are, but tell your problems how God your God how big your God is. And I got into fighting with Jesus just like Jacob. I was like, Jesus, why are you doing this to me? Like he's doing something to us, like we are so important. Why are you doing this to me, Lord? We have dedicated our kids to you. We've prayed for the for them. You have given them to us. In fact, both times on both pregnancies from Ruby, I had a dream that I was going to have a baby. And when I would tell her the dream, she would cry because she knows that I have to tell the whole world. <laughs> and I'm like, baby, I had a dream. Yeah, what? We're going to have a baby. Ah, I know. What do you mean you know? Yes, I've been holding it for a month. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you because you tell the whole world. <laughs> Sorry, baby. It wasn't like that, but you know. <laughs> I'm the crybaby in the house. 
So I said, Lord, why? Why would you let this happen? Why would you let me have a child with problems? The, the world is hard enough. And you know what Jesus told me that night? He said, Freddie, first of all, this is not about you. Second of all, that child that, that you are expecting is not yours. It's mine. And I have decided in my infinite wisdom that I am going to lend it to you for a few years on earth. But what are a few years on earth, 50, 60, 70, even 100 compared to eternity? So next time that you are going through a trial or tribulation, to suffering or a problem, remember that the best is yet to come. So stop complaining, stop crying, and start looking up. And after that, he said, and Freddie, don't you dare call any of my children abnormal or special or different because you all human beings are the same to me. Yes. And then I understood that God is God and I am not. Next time you face a problem, say, God is God and I am not. Next time you doubt of the existence of God and my dear children, I'm going to tell you that when you grow up, you're going to have friends that you're going to think they are the best thing in the world and they're going to make you doubt about God. They're going to tell you that it is out of fashion to believe in God, that that is not for cool people to believe in God. But I want to tell you, no matter how old you are, no matter who your friends are, no matter what they tell you, remember this, God is God and they are not. So the whole pregnancy went through. And the day came. And it was a very special day. It was Sabbath morning. And I was like any other Sabbath morning on my way to church. And I said, baby, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, so I'm going to church. And I'm like, don't you dare. <laughs> so I go to church from Miami to Fort Lauderdale, 45-minute drive. And as I start preaching, I tell the church jokingly, never joke about these things, people. I say, brothers and sisters, I'm preaching. I just want to let you know that my wife is due anytime now. So if by the end of the sermon you see me rushing, that means that I got a call and she's going to give birth today. It's okay. Halfway through the sermon, my phone starts to ring. One, two, three. 15 missed calls, I knew I was in trouble. I finished the sermon, and when I finished the sermon, I said, brothers and sisters, you know what I told you at the beginning of the sermon? It's true, I am sorry, I have to run to Miami to Mercy Hospital, may God have mercy on us. And I flew to the hospital I got to the house. Why is that police are never there when you need them the most? And I'm like, Lord, please send me a police so that they can escort me to the hospital. And as I'm driving, no Lamborghini for me. And as I'm driving down through I-95, I'm praying, Lord, please hold that baby. Hold it, hold it. I don't think Ruby was praying that prayer. A poor God. I see God in heaven. Okay, who do I answer, Freddie or Ruby? Freddie or Ruby? To go or not to go. God was so gracious, I was able to make it in time. Don't ask me how long it took me from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. But I made it. And guys, you know, we are there, the expectations. My aunt, which is a pediatrician, was there. I'm sorry. I was going to say veterinarian for whatever reason. No, no. Pediatrician <laughs> was there. And she had Ruby walk around the park like the Israelites around Jericho. That's why she gave birth so quick. But we knew it was about the eyes. It was about the eyes. And when we were there in the delivery room and the baby came out. And my aunt, the doctor, looks at the eyes. And she looks at me and she says... 
He's a perfect, beautiful boy. So Alejandro, you are our miracle boy. Adventurers, pathfinders, all of you, you are God's miracle child. And that was Alejandro's first day at church. He was singing. <laughs> And I want to tell you something about the love of Jesus Christ, the unconditional love of Jesus. No matter how hard your situation is, no matter if you think that your dreams, your plans have gone through the drain, Jesus still has a plan for you. And He will never rest until He fulfills the purpose for, he, for which He created each one of us. In the next slide, Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call to me. And I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things you haven't seen. And it is all because of the love of Jesus. That is why we're here today. Because He called us by name. And we belong to Him. And not only that. When Jesus calls you, He will also give you a talent. You know, ever since two years old. Alejandro has been playing. I couldn't put the full video, but you just see a picture. God has given each one of us a talent. Use it for his honor and glory. Don't be mad when your parents tell you to practice the instrument because it is a blessing of God. Keep on practicing. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Just be you because Jesus created you as you are. So as we close today, I'm going to invite you wherever you are. If you have something in your heart that you have been asking God and he has not answered yet, I want to ask you to come here and in the name of Jesus, we're going to ask him once again. Not that he will answer to us right now, but that he will give us peace to know that he already has the answer to our prayers. Jesus, we love you. And we thank you because you've never asked us to understand you. You just ask us to love you. The way that you love us, the way that you accept us, and the way that you have prepared a plan, a path, a way for each one of us. Forgive us for the many times that we have been discouraged, but the voices of this world telling us that we are not good enough. And thank you because you are in control. You are our creator. You not only created us, but you bought each one of us with the precious blood of Jesus. Help us to believe in you, to believe in your promises, to trust you no matter what the circumstances are. And thank you because you love us. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all of God's children say amen, amen. and amen.